Fixed blade knives are great tools to have for hunting, self-defense, survival, and tactical tasks. Some people even prefer to have a small fixed blade knife over a folding knife as their EDC, or everyday carry, because they can be drawn so quickly from their sheaths and are ready to use immediately. They're also considered much tougher than a folding knife. Knowing the anatomy of your fixed blade will not only help you understand the specs you'd like to see in one of your own, but will also reveal all the unique touches and features that knife makers add that could contribute to a knife's overall appeal. Let's start from the bottom up. The end of the knife's handle is called the pommel, which can also be referred to as the butt of a knife, but more accurately is a piece of the handle that can sometimes be used to hammer or strike. Some pommels come with a glass breaker tip, which is just what it sounds like, a pointed part of the pommel that can shatter glass in an emergency situation, say when you're trapped in your car after an accident. Moving up the knife, you may see a lanyard hole. Having a lanyard in that hole gives you the option of securing the knife to your hand, which will make chopping safer since you can have an extension of the handle tied securely to your wrist. The same principle works for the sheath of a fixed blade. By looping paracord through it, your knife can be carried as a neck knife or secured more tightly to your leg. You may see this in outdoor knives and survival knives where having a fixed blade within easy reach is a priority. Along the broad sides of the handle, as we move past the lanyard hole, you'll see the pins and rivets of a knife. Your knife handle could have screws, which make the handle scales interchangeable or removable. Being able to remove the handle scales, the material on either side of the handle which make up a complete grip, is a pretty cool feature that not only makes your knife more customizable and versatile, but easy to clean and maintain. It also reveals the tang of the knife, and the type of tang has a large impact on the quality, and potentially price, of a fixed blade knife. Your knife could be a full tang fixed blade. If you look along the spine of the handle, you'll be able to see that it's a one-piece construction of steel, from the blade all the way to the bottom of the handle. This is the strongest fixed blade knife type you can buy, which is why it's super popular for heavy-duty tasks like trailblazing and chopping wood. A skeletonized tang is also a one-piece construction, so it too will be extremely durable with the additional benefit of saving you weight. These tang styles come with or without scales. You'll often see skeletonized knives used as backup knives in outdoor and survival situations, but some people like to customize their knives with colorful paracord and will use them as their go-to camping tools. They can be extremely lightweight, since you lose a lot of the weight when you mill out the handle, which makes for a pretty comfortable carry around your neck or on your belt loop. A partial tang is when the steel of the blade extends only part of the way down the length of the handle. With this tang, you won't see the steel spine alongside the full length of the handle like you do on a full tang knife. A narrowing tang is similar, but instead of a blunt piece of steel that stops halfway down the handle, it has a gradual narrowing that extends a little deeper. A stick tang, or a rat tail tang, has a steel segment that goes all the way to the bottom of the handle scales, but the portion of steel in the handle is, just as its name implies, a stick-like piece. Let's move on from tangs and get back to our knife anatomy lesson. Some fixed blade knife handles have pronounced finger grooves that are designed to fit your fingers and help give a secure, comfortable grip. Moving up the handle scales and toward the blade, we have a bolster, which is the segment that allows the blade to transition into the knife handle. Some fixed blade knives give you a finger choil. A finger choil is an unsharpened groove that's designed specifically for your index finger. There may also be a sharpening choil, which is a cutout in the blade that allows you to sharpen the entire length of the blade's edge. Bolsters and finger choils offer both functionality and safety. When used correctly, they can help keep your fingers from traveling up the edge of your knife blade. Some fixed blades have a guard incorporated into the bolster or handle, which is a piece of the handle that, just as the name suggests, guards your finger from slipping upwards towards the sharp edge of the blade. The guard flares out pretty significantly from the handle in some cases, and can be much more subtle in others. Some knife lovers who don't intend to use their fixed blade for repetitive utility use still want a pronounced guard just for the way it makes a knife look. Just like a finger choil, it's coveted for its functionality as well as its aesthetics. Fixed blades have a ricasso, a small portion of steel right above the guard of a knife. Directly above the ricasso, you may find another choil, but definitely not one for your finger. This is just a small indent you'll see on some fixed blades that flows into the sharpened edge of the knife. The blade's heel is where you'll start to see the sharpened edge of the knife. The broad, flat side of the knife is the cheek, where you'll really get the first good look at the knife's finish. The spine, or the back of the knife, is the thick, usually unsharpened portion that is opposite of your knife's edge. 
Near the base of the spine, some knives have jimping, small notches that are designed to give your thumb a better grip when putting pressure on the knife for powerful cuts. The edge is the sharp part of the steel that's used for cutting, and this is where you'll see the knife's bevel, or grind. The type of grind indicates how the steel was thinned to get a cutting edge, and the bevel is the ground steel on the side of the blade that leads directly toward the sharpened edge. The belly of the blade is a term for the rounded portion that curves under the knife's point, which is the very tip of the knife's blade. Depending on the blade shape of your knife, you'll have what's referred to as a full belly, or you may not have a belly at all. It increases the knife's ability to slice, and you'll often see skinning knives with a very distinct belly. Other knife types, like this stiletto dagger, have very little curve at all. A serrated blade has a teeth-like edge that can make up the entirety of the cutting edge, which is called a full serration, or just a part of it, which is called a partial serration, or a combo edge. Serrations are good for cutting through things that may have a harder surface texture. It acts as a saw that can rip through material, whereas a plain edge blade specializes in cleaner slicing. Choosing the proper blade steel is very important in your selection. If you'll actively use the knife in the field and are equipped to maintain an edge and keep the knife cleaned up, then a carbon steel like 1095 would be the best choice. This will rust if not maintained, but is a workhorse and an economic material. D2 tool steel is very popular on higher end hunting knives because it's a very hard material and although technically not a stainless steel, will resist rusting. The various stainless steels will hold an edge longer generally and are popular, including Buck's 420 stainless, which has many fans in the world, but also many who feel it is difficult to sharpen. The popular 440C stainless is economical and dependable. We'll go over blade steel more thoroughly in another video. A great benefit of having a fixed blade knife is that they're very easy to clean. Folding knives have a hollow handle that can catch dirt and grime, but a fixed blade knife can be easily maintained because it has no internal mechanisms. Fixed blades also come in a wider range of models and sizes. Machetes, karambits, and push daggers are only a few examples of the extremely versatile collection you'll see under the fixed blade umbrella. Some even come with additional features, like a gut hook, that's designed to give you a more precise skinning capability while hunting. Because your fixed blade is most likely going to take on some tough work, the handle material is very important. G10 handles are made by taking layers of fiberglass cloth and soaking them in resin, then baking the compressed piece under intense pressure. This is a tough handle material that is generally textured to keep your hand from slipping, and it's very durable and can withstand hard use while giving great all-weather performance. An alternative to G10 is a Zytel handle, or a fiberglass reinforced nylon handle. You won't get the same grip and weight, but it's less expensive and requires very little maintenance. Micarta handles tend to be a bit pricier, but they also perform well in wet weather conditions. In fact, unpolished micarta tends to give you a better grip in a wet environment because it soaks up blood and sweat. If you want something a little more hygienic, you can go with a polished micarta handle, but that will take out some of the grippiness. Rubber handles are also known for their no-slip grip, and they can be a very comfortable and ergonomic handle that won't fatigue your hand. Of course, those aren't the only handle options for fixed blade knives. You'll often see beautifully crafted bone, stag, and wood handles, and these are preferred by many for their looks and functionality. Stag in particular is a high-end hunting knife choice for many. Another important aspect of choosing your fixed blade knife is where you keep it. A few of the most common fixed blade sheath materials are leather, kydex, and nylon. Each one has benefits and drawbacks. Leather is a traditional choice that looks great and provides a quiet unsheathing, but if you don't oil it up and maintain it properly, you'll probably eventually see some cracking that will make holstering your knife difficult and potentially dangerous. Carbon steels will also rust more readily in leather because of the tannin used in curing. You can also choose a kydex sheath, which is made from a durable thermoplastic material that's able to withstand exposure to salt water and wet weather. It may not be as beautiful or as quiet as a leather sheath, but it definitely provides a safe place for your knife. Kydex is made to fit your knife perfectly without using straps. It has a low profile, which is great for those who want a concealed carry, and with some Kydex sheaths, you can have your knife in a tip-up, sideways, or tip-down position. Nylon is a less expensive option that works relatively well, and many nylon sheaths have a pouch that allows you to keep gear with you. The better you care for your knife, the longer it will last and the better it will perform. Clean your knife and oil it after use. Store it properly without moisture left on the blade, and try not to store it in a leather sheath. Find the perfect fixed blade knife at Knife Center, the original and largest online catalog of knives anywhere in the world. 
We're constantly updating our website and YouTube channel with new videos and tutorials, so check back often. Thanks for watching.